Hi, it's Gloria Donahue with Nana's Cookery and welcome or welcome back to the kitchen. This afternoon we're going to be making a frozen chocolate velvet pie, which has a history to it for me, and I'll tell you a little bit about it as we go along. The crust is very simple. It's going to be a meringue crust, and meringue is always egg whites. Egg whites, sugar to sweeten it, and it has a little salt and some walnuts in it. And so now we're going to beat the egg whites. Remember, separate your eggs when they're cold, but when you want to beat them, they should be room temperature. So I have two egg whites in here and an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. And I am going to start beating them. Now when soft peaks start to form, I will then add my sugar very slowly. If you're beating egg whites and you're not adding sugar, you really have to be careful as they get stiff or they could get very dry. But if you're using sugar in a sweetened meringue, you can really pretty much beat them a lot even when they get stiff. I whipped the egg whites and the salt until soft peaks started to form and then I slowly added the sugar and it was a quarter cup of sugar. It's very typical for meringue. It's two tablespoons for each egg white and you can see how it grew into much more and that is stiff peaks. So we're going to take that off the mixer and we're going to add the nuts. Now the nuts, it calls for finely chopped nuts. I use a chopper, which is very handy because as you press down, it turns, so it moves. I make a little pile, a little pile, a little pile, and do it. If you don't have that, a chef's knife would, you, would do. I don't really use the processor for this because I don't really want ground nuts. And it's very hard in the processor to go from chop to, to grind and have it all even. I find it better with a chopper. I can control it better that or with a chef's knife. So we'll put that in there and you can see that is, they are nice and stiff. Now we're going to stir in these two cups of walnuts. And the whole thing is going into a greased eight inch pie plate. So you could up the measurements a little bit if you wanted to do it in a, in a nine. The original recipe calls for an eight. So we're going to put the nuts in. You can't really fold. Normally you would think of folding things into egg whites, but to be honest, there's a lot of nuts there. And uh, stirring is about the best I can do, I think. Then we're going to put this in the pie shell and build up a rim. Now the history behind this pie is that there is a restaurant in, there was a restaurant in Manchester, Vermont called the Jelly Mill. And I had a friend who had a second home nearby there and I would go and visit and we would go to that restaurant and have that pie and we loved it. Well, I then got the recipe for it from somewhere and I had it. Then the restaurant went out of business. I lost the recipe. I didn't find it for years. My friend would say, did you ever find that? Well, a week ago, I was going through travel catalogs for all my trips. And I don't usually go to the bottom because I keep some from very, very early trips and I don't want to throw the catalogs away. But this time I went down to the bottom and guess what I found? The recipe for this pie and I bet it was there for 10 years. You put this in the pie shell. What we're going to do is spread it around and build up the sides because it's going to have rather a high filling and we, we want to make sure that it will all fit within. So I'm going to go around. It'll take me a few minutes here. Our crust is prepared. It's in the pie plate. As you can see, I kind of reamed around in the middle there. I want to make sure I leave plenty of room and I want a nice high rim on it. And it's going to bake at 400 for approximately 10 minutes. Well, our pie crust is cool and we're going to do our filling. I took out of the refrigerator a chilled bowl and beaters. The whipped cream is cold. The condensed milk is cold. When you're going to whip cream, you want everything to be cold. Don't come home from the store, take a half hour uh, to come home and then try to beat up whipped cream and say it didn't work. It needs to be chilled. So that's what we're doing. I started in making this filling by taking a quarter of a cup of light corn syrup. That's the light caro corn syrup. 
a tablespoon of water and a tablespoon of vanilla. And I brought that to a boil in a small pan. And then I added one cup of chocolate bits and whisked it and let it cool. Now the filling is going to be, and then I took out two tablespoons for trimming the pie at the end. But we have a cup and a half of heavy whipping cream. We have two thirds of a cup of condensed milk from a can and the chocolate mixture less the two tablespoons that we put in. We're going to put this in the mixer and beat it and we'll start low. You know when you whip cream, you have to start low or you'll be wearing it. So we're gonna start low here. So I think that's what I'm looking for. And now I'm going to put that in, in the pie crust. Now this is very soft, but this pie is served frozen. So the fact is at room temperature, it's going to be way too loose to eat. Even at refrigerated temperature, we're going to put this in the freezer. and it'll be served when it's frozen. Uh, then you can trim the top with some of the chocolate like I did on the peanut butter pie. And it can be served right from the freezer. And we're going to put that in the freezer and freeze it. Well, our pie is ready to go. I didn't realize I'm dressed in chocolate for chocolate pie, so it's perfect. Let me tell you what happened. I froze the pie, I put aside the chocolate to trim it, and when everything was being cleaned up, guess what was cleaned out by accident? So when I went to put the chocolate on the pie, I just took three tablespoons of chocolate bits and a tablespoon and a half of butter, melted it, got it till it was the right consistency to squeeze because it had to cool and there it is and that's what happens in the kitchen folks so thanks for stopping by again and enjoy this pie we're going to